welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Doctor Who! We're talking Doctor Who once more! Um, you guys seem to really like these videos, and I really enjoy taking a look at the big old pile of fuggery that's going on with respect to Doctor Who. Uh, not from like a, a gloating perspective, I just think it's baffling. And every single like interview we see from these people just systematically proves themselves to be totally the wrong people for the jobs that they're in. And again, I always think to myself, and I've said it many times in videos before, there is no justice in the world. How the fuck do these people have jobs? <laughs> Seriously. Um, now, this is an article with the hit, uh, Sydney Morning Herald. They're a great uh, website, actually. They do really good articles. They've had some very good scoops and interesting tidbits of info over the years. They were the ones which dropped the, the not bombshell, but they had an interview with James Cameron where he basically just revealed... Well, he did reveal. He literally said, I was lying. I'm paraphrasing. But he said, I, I was lying when I said I liked uh, Terminator Genesis. I was just doing it to support Arnold Schwarzenegger. You lied to millions of people, mate. You're a dick. So anyway, let's get into it, right? This is a very, very good article. And again, just really goes to show the nonsense from the people in charge. We've got the likes of Chris Chibnall. Chibby, chib, 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 no. We had a conversation right from the start. Where we went, here is the trajectory of your doctor, Chris Chibnall said. Sitting down for a post-mortem. <laughs> That's very apt terminology, isn't it? <laughs> With Whitaker and co-executive producer Matt Stevens. This is the journey you will go on while you are the doctor. We talked about timings and where things would play in your journey across the role. Um... And Chibnall continues and says, that's all still in play. We knew what we wanted to do last year. We knew what we'd be doing this year would be entirely different because also, partly, it's about the 13th Doctor's time on the show. We wanted to feel like that series was accessible to everybody. Whatever episode they dropped in, that was really, really important. I can't help but think to myself, there's some like underlying message there. It's accessible to everybody. What we're talking about here, maybe inclusivity and all this fucking nonsense. Um, now that I mean, that's not like that's not terrible. But then the, uh, the stuff continues. I think what's important to note here is that they basically said a couple years back, we've got our decision of where we're going to go, and that's it. Blinkers on at that moment. Blinkers on. It's almost like the kid in the playground that goes na 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 na, not listening. When when you say something to him, that's what they did. Na 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 na, and. Um, and that's basically what's happened here. They said, right, we've got this vision. To hell with anyone else. To hell with any feedback. And this is the result. And the next thing clarifies that, I think. One of the early criticisms of the Whitaker era was that the series did not feature classic monsters. In a second season as a Doctor, that strategy was flipped on its head. And episodes have featured the return of the Master. Yeah, but basically what they did here was they went... Again, it's that no, 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 listen thing. Oh, you want that, do you? Well, we'll give it to you then. In the most butchered way ever. And it is the same. It is exactly the same with respect to Ridley Scott and Alien. So he's famously quoted as saying, you want the alien, I'll give you the fucking alien. And then what happened? Alien Covenant happened. Oh dear. And this is the same thing here. It's when creators resent the fans of the property that they are now... They are the gatekeepers of. They are the shepherd. They are the caretaker. Because you didn't create this, Chib Chibby. Chibnall. But you're, you're, you're taking care of it at this moment. But you resent the fans for voicing their opinion. You resent fans for their opinion on the show which you are looking after. It's horrendous. And that's what they did. Again, so new master. Uh, played by Sasha Tuan. However you say that name. A cameo from time agent Jack Harkness. Uh, and a storytelling entangling the Time Laws with one of the show's iconic classic monsters, the Cybermen. Uh, Chibnall says that the most challenging thing about dealing with criticism over the lack of classic monsters was knowing that Whitaker's second season would feature them heavily. Yeah, bollocks, mate. You would, <laughs> you would want to create appetite and hunger. Stephen Moffat, the preceding producer, had brilliantly done these kind of great big monsters... Um, in Peter Capaldi's last season, so it's always about how are you creating different parameters for each series. Again, whatever. Um, now, goes on and says, it was bigger than 
It was bigger than that, and I don't think Joe would mind me saying, but the read-through was really emotional, Whitaker says. Not in the sense of crying, just in the sense that for the two of us, when we sat next to each other, and they say your names and who you play, it's an incredible thing to share. Oh. Um, whatever. Utter, utter nonsense. Right. So, continues down, and we're talking about, you know, some bits and pieces of regeneration and things like that. Um, not really interested in this too much, but does go on to say, we're not on set at the same time for those regeneration moments. Obviously, it's happened before in different ways, but for it to happen for her in this unexpected way for her character, but also to have such a kick-ass character to bat off and it be rug-pulling in a way that isn't neat, it was wonderful to play. I don't think that made any sense, but whatever. Doesn't matter at all. Um, now, it goes on... It just talks about, again, storytelling elements and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it goes to say, and the conversation around what fans want. Now, this is this is the... Ah, this is, I love it. Mm, mm, let's get down. Let's see what they say. And the conversation around what fans want and what audiences want. All that kind of stuff. You just have to trust yourself as a program, he adds. So this is, um, this is Stevens. Uh, what's his, I can't remember his bloody full name. God damn it. Um, it's, it's gone, massively gone from my brain. But you know the guy, it's Stevens. He's one of the producers, sorry. Now, um, he goes on to say, I think it sort of cleaves to the basic principle we have and I've had on the show. But I think we all have is you have a vision for what you want to do while you're on the show. Whether you're the doctor, whether you're a producer, whether you're a writer, and you see that vision out. So basically, it is literally what I said. No, 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 no. Not listening. They said, we've got a vision, we're going to see it through. To hell with everyone else. And then it, it continues, it doubles down on it. And the conversation around what fans want and what audiences want, all that kind of stuff, you just have to trust yourself as a program. You can't really be buffeted by those wins because people will change their minds. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you for real? Are you for real? It is baffling. And they even reference things like Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars, and even the new reboot of Dracula to try and double down on things. One of the most complex dances to be danced in Doctor Who is between the story elements, the audience claim they want... And the story elements they actually want. Are you the fucking arbiter of people's thoughts now and desires? How disgraceful. In shows with passionate fandoms which would run the gamut of uh, from Doctor Who and Star Trek, Star Wars and even the new reboot of Dracula. Audiences can pivot quickly from demands for more and criticisms of too much. But you know, do you? You know. This is disgraceful. The complex dances between what audiences claim they want and story elements they actually want. Well, who's the arbiter of that then? How disgraceful. It really is. That's horrendous. Um, now, Stevens points to a scene late in the season where companion Graham is confessing his fear to the Doctor and she responds by saying only that she is socially awkward. Some people go, I just wanted her to say it's going to be alright. And you go, yes, you do want that. But you don't necessarily need that. Uh, oh, it's... It's Stevens, isn't it? Or is it Strevens? Fuck, my brain's gone. It is Strevens, sorry. It's a moment for the Doctor to show she's not human. Now, Strevens continues and says, We know the story and the stories we're telling. We will tell that to the best of our ability. You can't get too sidetracked by the other stuff because the truth of any series, of anything, is that some people will like it and some people won't like it. And that's the only universal truth you can take. But apparently now you're the arbiter of what people want and and would like. I mean, this is horrendous stuff. So you go, yes, you do want that, but you don't necessarily need that. I I hate this. These people. This is what's wrong with the BBC. You know what you want, guys? Do you know what you want me to do? You you want me to I don't know something something baffling. You want me to tell good stories, yeah? Well, you're not going to get that. Because you, you want that, but you don't need that. What you need, ladies and gents, what you need 
is for me to be like, what? Fuck off. What they want and what they need. Have they listened to them? Like, I'm half expecting them to go, <sighs> start sniffing their own shit. Like, seriously. Have they listened to what they sound like here? You want it. Oh, you want it, but you don't need it, ladies and gents. Mwah. Oh, fuck this. Anyway, I think these people are definitely not the right ones for the job. I'm sure everyone can agree. Uh, either way, love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Stay up to date on the world of pop culture and movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Stay tuned. I've got a Bloodshot trailer. A Bloodshot trailer. I've got a Bloodshot review out later. I'm going to go watch that in a moment. Also, if you haven't, subscribe to my second channel, my backup channel, more Mr. Each Reviews. I released my first video on that channel. Um, it's an old video from this channel, but a lot of people haven't seen it. It's my Dog Soldiers review. Check it out. I've actually got a really big bushy beard in it. Um, that's how old that video is. Anyway, I'm Mr. H. Take care.